Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. This is the third lesson in the series of credit and borrowing for the General Maths 2. Um, this is looking at the future value formula, um, of which the future value and the present value are both on your formula sheet. Um, look, to be honest with you, the future value formula is exactly the same as your compound interest uh, formula. There's not too much that is actually different as you can see um, the only guess thing is we have FV which obviously has got their future value that's your um, total of value your final value your total amount your PV is your present value what it's worth today and I guess in terms of the compound interest formula that is your principal it's what you originally put in um, so that's our PV and then you still have your one plus your rate is a percent per annum and your N is a number of compounding periods or the periods of your um, your formula and remember there's another word for uh, for present value and I guess that is your lump sum which we spoke about last lesson which is what compound interest does as opposed from the annuity style of question. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. Again, if you would like to pause this and, and have a crack at it first, that's up to you. Um, so first of all, Blake invests $7,000 over five years at a compound interest rate of 4.5% per annum. So as you know, I like to highlight things. We're investing $7,000. Um, that is my principal amount or my present value. We have over five years and a compound interest rate of 4.5% per annum. Now, I've asked this question previously about how do I know that this is, I guess, a compound interest question, or in this sort of case, what is a, it's a future value question. You might ask why they call it future value. Um, obviously, because it's gonna be the future value, what it's worth in the future, but it's more of a financial um, term that is used in real life maths. But let back, back to that question. I know it's compound interest because it says compound interest in the question. So that's a pretty big giveaway. So if you prefer, I mean, you could use the A equals P brackets 1 plus R the power of N. You could also use the FV equals PV 1 plus R the power of N. Um, I guess it's uh, whatever floats your boat. Um, either way, you've got your total amount or your future value is going to be equaling to, um, and remember it says calculate the future value, so that's the question, uh, my present value or my principal amount of $7,000 one plus, now my rate's gonna be 0 0.045, which is my 4.5% per annum, but notice I was about to put it over something, however, it's compounding annually. How do I know that? Well, it's over five years, compound interest per annum, there's nothing else telling me that's gonna be monthly or fortnightly, so it is going to be annually, so it's just to the power of five. And so it's gonna be a simple matter now of just simply typing that into our calculator and then going from there. So this will be, um, what have we got? $8,723.27. Alrighty, so that's my future value. That's what it's gonna be worth um, in five years time. So that is my part A of my answer. Now, my part B says, Calculate the present value of an annuity that has a future value of $500,000, eight years, with an interest rate of 8.5% per annum, compounded monthly. All right, so this question is going to be a little bit more complex. There's a bit more going on. Now, we have done this question in the preliminary course, and what we actually did, we used the compound interest formula, substitute our values in, and then we rearranged. Um, in this question, I guess what we can do, because on the formula sheet, we're actually given a present value formula, which has already been uh, rearranged for us, uh, which is you know, kind of cool, um, and we may as well use that. But remember, I mean, the whole, whole way that's been uh, sort of rearranged is that there's a times in between the PV and the one plus other power of n. Opposite of times is divide, and so they simply divide by one plus other power of n. So to be honest, it's not that much more difficult to do it um, via the first method. However, wait, may, we may as well make things uh, easy for us if we can. So my future value is in this case, we want it to be 500,000. So I want my future value to end up being half a million dollars. 
Now, my one plus. Now, in this case, it says here compounded monthly and 8.5% per annum. So in this particular instance, we need to divide it by 12. So 0 0.085, which is my 8.5% um, as a decimal, I need to put it over 12. So they're both in the same amount. And it's per eight years. But remember, it's compounded monthly. So it's 12 times a year for eight years. So it's 12 times eight which is going to be to the power of 96. I can now put that into my calculator to get a total amount of 253916.41, which is going to be $253,916. So what that actually means, I mean, that's my answer, so that's a good thing, but what does it actually mean? Well, it means that if I want to have a future value of 500,000, so I want to make a million dollars, I need to invest $253,916 today in order for that to happen. So my present value is that, well, I guess it's 250,000 thereabouts. I hope that made sense. Okay, example two. Um, again, you might like to uh, have a go at this pause, do it, and then see if you get the same answers as me. Okay, A, Michaela invests $200,000 for 10 years at 6% per annum and it's compounded quarterly. All right, so some pretty important information going on there. Some people might like to, you know, write things down. Like, for example, you could write down present value equals 200,000. Remember, that's what I'm investing. It's my principal amount. If you want to use P as principal, that's up to you. My rate is going to be 0 0.06. That's 6% as a decimal, but it's compounded quarterly. So I'm going to divide that by four. My N is going to be 10 years. However, it's four times a year, so that gives me n equals 40. So that can be sometimes handy to write down if it helps you. But let's have a look at what the question is actually asking me. Um, all right, calculate the value of Michaela's investment at maturity. So it's asking for the future value, and so we're putting in the present value of 200,000. We've got our one plus, now we've got our rate there, 0 0.06 divided by four, again, because it's quarterly, and to the power of 40, because it's four times a year for 10 years. So now what it's a matter of putting that uh, amount into our calculator, Please really be careful about when you're typing things into your calculator that you're making sure that you get all the zeros. That's a really common mistake that I do see that really should be avoided as it is a silly error. Um, but if I do that, I'm going to get an answer of $362,803.68. Once again, remember, always the two decimal places for money. All right, the next part of my question says, show that the compounded value of Abby's investment is greater than the value of Michaela's investment. Okay, so this is going on to the next part of the question, which I probably should have read. Abby also invests $200,000 for 10 years, but her interest rate is 6% compounding monthly. So you can see the first one was quarterly, the second is monthly. So it's saying show that it will be greater than. So we know that um, it's going to be greater than. So let's hopefully show that. So my future value equals $200,000, that same amount, 1 plus 0 0.06, still 6%. But this, I'm instead of doing it quarterly, so dividing it by 4, we're doing it monthly, which is going to mean that we're going to be calculating the interest more often, which obviously means it's going to be a, more, uh, a bigger amount. So 10 times 12 is 120. So what we now need to do is just need to modify that uh, previous question, or you can redo it, I guess, but you can just change the values if you wish, um, so that it is over a monthly um, compounding period. If I do that, we come up with this time $363,879.35. So it is bigger, not by much, probably just over $1,000, but certainly it is bigger. Um, therefore, let's say it is greater than...
Michaela. Michaela's investment. Okay. It's always oft, um, good to reread that question. Just make sure you've answered it. And now I'd, they probably would accept that amount because we have shown that it's bigger, but I'd like to write that out just in case. Okay, and then comes the last part C. It says, explain why Abby's investment is worth more than McKellar's investment. And we've spent... We spent a lot of time doing this question with the compound interest stuff. It's the same thing for the future value because it's the same formula. And that's what I mentioned before. Um, the investment is compounded more regularly. Investment is compounded um, more often or more regularly. Um, therefore, interest is calculated more often um, or therefore interest is added mm, I don't know what's the best way of saying that the investment is compounded more often therefore interest um, is also calculated more often and increases I don't know that's not a, a fantastic solution, but um, off the top of my head, that's probably good. So you're sort of saying that the, that the investment is calculated more often, more times, more frequently, um, therefore it's added quicker and goes up. Something like that is probably what they're looking for. Uh, okay, look, again, pretty quick. Um, hopefully you understand the, the future value and the present value. Uh, again, if you want to use a compound interest formula, you're most welcome. There's really not too much that is different between it. It's just in the financial world, um, I guess more applied, it's called future value. But you do need to know the terms because if it talks about it in the question like this one did, we need to know what it means. I hope it made sense, guys. Uh, this goes then with exercise 1C. Uh, have a go at all the questions. Any problems, let me know. Have a great day.